What's the most eastern point in Greater London? The most eastern point in Greater London? I'm going to take you there. We're going to find out. I've never been there before. It's a bit of a mystery, a bit of an adventure, possibly a bit of a wild goose chase, but what better thing can you imagine to go to the very easternmost limits of our amazing city? So this morning I was just researching the course of the Mar Dyke. It's a walk someone suggested ages ago and it was suggested again about a year or two ago. And I've, I've crossed past the Mar Dyke a couple of times. And I thought maybe today's the day to walk the Mar Dyke. So I started looking it up on a map. And I was just trying to find the source of the Mar Dyke. And as I was looking on the Google map, I saw this kind of heritage pin there. It's like a little castle. And I thought, I wonder what that is in the middle of a field. And it's labelled easternmost point in Greater London. Easternmost point in Greater London. And I thought, wow, I knew it was around here somewhere, but to see it marked like that on the map, and at that instant, I just got a flash of, I've got to go there. I've got to take you there as well. I've got to take the YouTube viewers to that point, that pin. That's where we're going. That's what we're doing. And in terms of the route, I mean, let's be honest, you can kind of, there's a number of options, but I thought, you know, I'm leaving in the afternoon, five miles, some interesting field paths that go from here in Upminster at the end of the district line, the end of that little Romford to Emerson Park to Upminster line through just three stops. And when considering the route to take, because you've got to walk out there, haven't you? I could have walked down from uh, Brentwood or Howard Wood, interesting walks. But I thought, no, you need to walk out of London. So I thought, when I looked at the route up and I saw it, I could take that little Emerson Park line, the Romford to Upminster Overground line, just three stops, Romford, Emerson Park, Upminster. I love it, I've only called it once before. That's another walk someone suggested to me once. And I caught it when I did the walk out here, when I went to Horn Church, to Horned Church. I called it back to Romford that day. I thought that's the perfect way to start this slightly kind of natty, eccentric adventure. I've got to get that slightly natty, eccentric railway line to get here. Of course, those lines are all being renamed now to things that... I think that one's going to be like the Liberty Line. I mean, I think at the moment people call it the Emerson Park Line. Emerson Park, that's the only thing that puts it on the map. <laughs> it's having that taken away from it. So I've plotted what looks like an interesting route, or I've kind of half plotted what looks like an interesting route. Sort of through some fields, under the M25, out to North Ockenden. North Ockenden, that's the actual east easternmost limits of Greater London. Very excited about this. I am just going to take a look in Clockhouse Gardens, because there's a moat marked on the map somewhere near here. So Clockhouse Gardens would be a possible place right and it does say that it's a historic public garden so so this lovely little lake here in Clockhouse Gardens is the moat on the Ordnance Survey map although it's I imagine it probably dates from when uh, a house was built here in 1775 called New Place there is an older mention of New Place which goes back to the 15th century it's mentioned in the 1400, so I don't know if the moat is a legacy of the first house built on the site or the uh, landscaped one in 1775. The house, a new place, was demolished in 1924. You can tell we're on the edge of London because of this old telephone box here. Which, of course, has no phone. That old house over there, the wooden board, clapper board house, looks like a survivor of former times. Mm -hmm. 
This is a kind of classic outer London scene, isn't it? A gated patch of wasteland with a little bit of fly tipping around the edge. A big gas bottle there amongst the weeds. Great radio tower just down that road there. Another symbol of the outer reaches of London. One of my favourite old London walking books has the best title for a walking book ever, I think. It's called The Outer Circle, Rambles in Remote London. And this is the, almost like the ultimate outer circle ramble in remote London, right out on the edge, on the very edge. The Jobber's Rest Pub. Is that any good? Anybody know? Of course, if we're going to go to the easternmost point in London, we also need to try and find the easternmost pub in London. Hmm. Of course, as people will already have pointed out in the comments, for most people, this is Essex. It's not London. I'll be going, it ain't London. I know that. When I put something up about the Wimpy Bar in Upminster, people are going, Upminster's not in London, it's in Essex. And of course, I suppose, actually, I think the address does say, Upminster, Essex, North Ockenden, Essex, but it is Greater London. It is Greater London. So, you know, deal with that. <laughs> it's a city of anomalies and mysteries and quirky little cryptic things just littering the landscape. That's why I can't let go of just walking it obsessively. <laughs> Well, there's another pub just a little bit further along the road, so the Jobber's Rest is not even the most eastern pub in Upminster, let alone in London. This place is called uh, The Thatched House. I mean, it doesn't seem to have a thatch, but don't let that stop them. Pike Lane here is where we turn off the road and head uh, into the Thames Chase Forest Centre is down here somewhere. Now I can pick up the Ordnance Survey map, which is usually where things go a bit pear-shaped, isn't it? What I am excited about is down here, I'm not sure it'll be legible, but I'll put a mark, is a place marked Hobbs Hole. And I'm reading Alan Moore's amazing book, Voice of the Fire. And in that, a hob man in ancient Britain is like a kind of, I don't know, you probably call him a shaman now if you're one of those new age type people, but of course they were domestic shaman. And in Alan Moore's world they're called hobmen. I wonder if they were called hobmen generally. I'm just uh, cutting across this golf course now which normally brings with it a certain degree of jeopardy for me, but I think this is pretty straightforward. So we take this path here that runs parallel with the uh, M25. So I popped into the really lovely Thames Chase Forest Centre there, and they've got an amazing restored threshing barn out the back. 17th century threshing barn built in the 1600s but built they believe using a lot of recycled timbers that from much older buildings from medieval buildings and they've dated some of the timbers back to the 12th and 13th century and it was so oh it felt really special to them. there's a moment of wow when i stepped inside the barn i was not expecting it at all and we stood there amongst these great ancient timbers it's a really majestic thing. I highly recommend that if you if you do this walk, or if you live in the area, go and visit that beautiful threshing barn. 
So down here, you'll hear the thunderous sound of the M25, because we're walking parallel to it now. The M25 is behind me over there. I'm going to walk down here, and then we're going to go underneath the M25. And normally for me, that's a symbolic moment where you feel like you are leaving London, or, you, or in fact that you've left London. But what's interesting about this point, the easternmost point in Greater London, is that it is on the other side of the M25, east of the M25. <sighs> Can't wait. I don't know how you feel about it. Look, there's the road down there, the road of legend, the M25, a road that forever belongs to Ian Sinclair. And now a route continues along the edge of this field here with the uh, M25 on our left. And hopefully at the bottom, there's a point where we can cross the M25. And then, you know, we'll find the eastern limits of Greater London. I feel like the eastern limits of Greater London. It's like a kind of great title and a chorus for a, like a folk song with country and western tinge to it. I can hear it being sung Billy Bragg style almost, but with harmonica. My dad was playing harmonica when I was down with him in North Devon at the weekend. And maybe I'll get the, my dad to play a bit of harmonica so I can put it under here to soundtrack this, Eastern Limits of Greater London. I'm not going to sing it. I did do that in my voice notes and it was, it sounded deranged. Maybe it's the fumes of the M25. It's over the meadow, over the stream, it's where I am going and where I have been. It's over the meadow, over the stream, it's where I am going and where I have been. There's our bridge over the M25. And then it's actually not that far from the other side there. This is looking north. And this is looking south. So here we have a London Transport bus, 370, crossing the M25. This always feels like an auspicious moment, the crossing of the M25. It's great. And also, the outermost reaches of the London Transport Network as well. When you see London bus stops in the countryside, something gives me a tingle, a tingle of excitement, a tingle of something almost out of place, you know, from another time. And this is another like peculiar thing. I think this is the footpath we need to take, but it's actually closed off. Look, right next to the road on the, on the one side on the right of the frame there. And then there's a crash barrier and there's actually no entrance from the footpath into that, from the, you know, from the pavement into that footpath. You have to go through the weeds to get there. I'm guessing it's not a particularly well-used footpath. This is the footpath. And we're heading to St Mary's Church over there and from this distance it looks like that could be a, quite an old church. We've got to go over this little bridge here. God, the thunder of the M25 is really something, isn't it?
Yeah. I hope this leads to the church. This is interesting, isn't it? Those deep tractor tracks <laughs> kind of define the way you've got to walk between them, basically. I love that old brick building there. Huge industrial greenhouse here. The church is just the other side. So I think this is the moat at Hall Farm here. And what a beautiful scene there with the blossom and the tower of St Mary's Church behind it. What a gorgeous scene, our second moat of the day. So here it is, St Mary Magdalene at North Ockingdon, which dates from the 14th century. So built in the 1300s with the tower most likely built in the 1400s. And it's funny, on Wikipedia it says that this is where the Reverend Richard Durham first accurately measured the speed of sound, which is funny because I'd also read that attributed to the church there at Upminster, and I think that is in my other video, so um, I'm not sure one of them's wrong. Maybe he did it in both of them. And the door is locked, but that's not massively surprising considering it's, uh, it's a Monday afternoon, so you wouldn't really expect it to be open. But it is Lent, so, you know. It's great to see the daffodils out here in the churchyard at St Mary's. Isn't that lovely? Does that mean spring's arrived? Or what people call false spring? I think that's more accurate, isn't it? It's really kind of mind-blowing to think that from this tower here was where the speed of sound was first accurately measured. It could be actually, I'm trying to remember. I, what I'll do is I will insert the piece to camera I did and I talked about that measurement because I think it may have been both towers. It may have been this tower and the other one at Hornchurch. Either way, I will uh, put that bit of video in here. So Upminster literally means the large church on high ground. And the church they're referring to is this one here, St Lawrence's Church. I think it has some connection to Waltham Abbey. I think it may be paid tithes to Waltham Abbey, or maybe it was land that was given to the, the abbots and the monks of Waltham Abbey, the final resting place of King Harold, of course, and featured in a number of walks. But the astonishing feature about this church here, for me, you can see, this, you see that tower there behind me. It was here, there was a reverend here, Reverend William Dur Durham, Durham, Durham. And he seems to have been quite an unusual uh, kind of clergyman for his age in the early 18th century, late 17th century. He was an avid scientist and conducted a number of scientific experiments, not the kind of woo-woo stuff, but like proper science. He was a, uh, a fellow of the Royal Society. I think he was a kind of, uh, I don't know, a colleague of, but he would have been in the same sort of circles as Sir Isaac Newton. And it was here, from this church, ha uh, this church tower, that he made the first accurate recording of the speed of sound. It's incredible, wasn't it? The speed of sound was first recorded here from this church tower. Just let that sink in a moment. Apparently, what he, uh, the method he used is he used a telescope from the church tower to observe uh, someone firing a, a, gu a gun, a shotgun, in a field, in a nearby field. And somehow, from the flash of the gun to the sound reaching him, that is how he calculated the speed of sound. It's amazing. So from here, from the church, St Mary's, I am going to take the most direct route to, uh, the, to well, North Ockenden. No, I was going to say, we are, we are in North Ockenden, but to the point, the easternmost point in London, which is basically over there somewhere, not far, but uh, yeah. Interesting to see what it's marked with. most edge of the eastern edge, well, uh, the easternmost point in London. It's not riffing the same. I need maybe need a guitar. Hey 
Here's a bit of trivia for you that I probably should have included back there when we crossed the M25, but North Ockingdon here in the London Borough Havering is the only inhabited place in Greater London outside of the M25. The only inhabited place in Greater London outside of the M25. Obviously that implies there are places in London outside the M25 that are not inhabited. I'm trying to think where they are. That's a follow-up trivia question. <laughs> Where are the uninhabited parts of Greater London outside of the M25? Well, they could actually still be in Havering, bearing in mind there's areas to this, all around here which are in Havering where there's no people, just fields. I've got a muddy path here to go along, which is inevitable really because it's been raining. There's a little brook or a ditch here. This is another sign that you're on the edge of London here, this collapsed barn next to the road. I've got to walk along that little lane there with no pavement. There is an alternative. I could work, walk further south and go across the fields, but that's quite a big detour and it's going to get dark in about an hour. And this is the village that we're heading towards, Bullfan. Is that how you spell it? Bullfan? Interesting, isn't it? Fen Lane, Bullfan. Hmm. Anyway, let's crack on. quite a bit further along this road than I first thought but you know it is what it is at this point no turning back it's a pretty amazing view from up here looking east isn't it out into Essex I mean like real Essex as in not greater London Essex so we've just walking past the North Ockingdon sign but I'm pretty sure we're still in North Ockingdon not that much further to go now. I'm sort of regretting taking this route. It would be much better to take the footpaths. If you follow my tracks, don't do this bit. Take the footpaths, here come some cars, because you're having to constantly stop and step out the road. But everyone's been really lovely so far. So this is the final bend of the road around here. It's quite a bit darker than I anticipated being. I planned to get here about an hour early, and I'm not entirely sure what happened, but... So here we go. More dodging cars, but not for much longer. So the spot we're looking for is somewhere over there and I don't, <laughs> I don't even know how, if we're going to be able to get into the field to see it. I think so, but um, yeah, well, let's give it a go. A little bit more, we've got to turn off the road somehow. It's very close now on the right hand side, but still no indication of how I'm going to get off this road to whatever point it is that marks the easternmost point of Greater London. It's all still a mystery. So here's the first of two bridges. This little stream here, I think, feeds the Mardike. It, it, it may, in fact, even be the Mardike. There's a second one up here, a little bit further to the east, and I think that's the marker I'm looking for. So we're very close now. So that, and also there's a little view of the Mardike or a feeder of the Mardike. So basically at this point, I think I'm going to go around the edge of this field here. And I think it's in the other corner over there. So I'm going to go around the field because I don't think there's a way, there's a footpath on the other side of this field here that goes to the spot. So there's a little bit of a gamble here because there could be a thick hedge between here and the footpath, but I feel like I've got to take a risk, right? And in terms of road safety, luckily I carry this head torch with my bag, although I never use it. And so I just tie it to my carabiner and then you can see it just gives me a strip of light there. On the front, and on the back, I've got a cycle light on my so I'm sort of covered front and back. And the drivers were great, actually, in terms of everyone gave me a really wide berth. And that's not a great, very quite a narrow lane. So, you know, that was good. Um, so I don't know if this is a footpath, but the footpath is on the other side. And there's a river. This is exciting, isn't it? This <laughs> has turned into a real, real adventure. Definitely worth, I mean, I definitely would have been doing the walk in the pitch black which is why I have this for that instance. Oh, I'm gonna to need to turn it off now again. Um, for walking in the dark when I, so I can see my way. But um, it would have been better for not have that experience of just dodging cars, right? Which was quite slow, but <laughs> I did, I thought this was gonna be a very straightforward, quite quick walk, but it's turned into one that I will remember for a very long time. 
regardless of, I mean, we're not at the end yet, are we? <laughs> So that little stream, that river, is running along the bottom of this field here, just the other side of where I'm walking. Um, that, I, if it, like I say, if it's not the Mardike, it's a, a feeder of the Mardike, one source of the Mardike. I think the footpath that I want is on the other side there, on that other bank, but what can I do? So I don't know if this comes up on the screen, but you can see now I am there. I am on the easternmost point in Greater London in the corner of this field here. You see the icon there, the blue icon, the blue dot showing my position. And I think maybe it's slightly here, slightly north of here. Let's keep moving till we get one dot over the other. And it's in the corner of this field by the looks of it. My foot just slid into that puddle. Yeah, that appears to, oh, is it slightly north? But yeah, this is it, the easternmost point in Greater London. This muddy field here in North Ockenden. Maybe it's a little bit here. Is that it now? Let's get them over. Let's get the points, the dots completely over each other. No, slightly back. <laughs> here. So this is it, <laughs> this field in North Ockenden, the easternmost point in Greater London, 18 miles from the centre of London, however they mark that point, I'm not sure, I have to double check the Wikipedia page, but this is 18 miles from what's considered the centre of London, it used to be the GPO didn't it, it probably still is where they measure the distances from. It's amazing. I don't know if what I was expecting, whether I was expecting there to be some sort of stone or marker. There might be on the other side of this hedge where there's a footpath, possibly, but I don't know why there would. Um, tell me in the comments below if you live in the area and you know that there's a stone or a marker there. Because um, there is a little, yeah, a little monument thing. I don't know, I'm in the dark, but <laughs> wow, here it is. I mean, sorry, I can't show. I mean, maybe it's what it should be. It should be in darkness. The easternmost point of Greater London should be shrouded in darkness. Isn't it incredible? Thanks for coming with me. I mean, this walk isn't quite over yet because I'm in the middle of a field in the, on, the, on the easternmost edge of Greater London. There's no transport or anything here. So I've somehow got to find my way back. So I'll do my sign off when we get back to the road maybe. And I, I think I know where I'm gonna go, but I'll tell you up here. And of course, there's no way back onto the road here. So I have to walk around. No, it's not that bad. I have to walk around the edge of the field. I mean, I could leap over that ditch, but I don't really fancy that much. So I came back to the point where I entered that field and now I've got a road walk along here in the dark. Hmm. I did nearly jumped over that ditch, that river, and I saw the error of my ways. Do you know what, with the amount of traffic coming along here, I might get an Uber for safety's sake. Well, when I came out in that field, I realised it was madness to try and walk along that road in the dark. So I got an Uber to here, to West Horndon, and I'm going to get on the Fed Church Street train here, the C to C, I think it is. So thank you for joining me on that walk, that cracking walk to the easternmost point of Greater London. And uh, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk wherever that may, may be, wherever that may be. Maybe a muddy field somewhere else on the west. Maybe we should go to the westernmost point of Greater London. I feel like I've been there before though. See you later. It's over the meadow, over the stream. It's where I am going and where I have been. It's been a long day now. It's time for a beer. And now for home, of course I must stay.